Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. My name is Saleh and this is the Cloud Nerd channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you one of the most awesome things and features that you can get when you're working in the cloud and when you start interacting with the cloud services, which is actually the ability to deploy your code and application without really worrying about any infrastructure or anything other than just writing and deploying your code. In Google Cloud Platform or GCP, this is done through either Google App Engine or Google Cloud Functions or Google Cloud Run. And in this video, I will talk about App Engine. So App Engine is a serverless offering from Google that is very scalable and very efficient when you want to deploy applications that are either microservices or a front end for other applications or applications that you really cannot have an accurate estimation or measurement on how they will scale and what type of load and traffic that they will receive when you want to deploy them or put them in production. And you really want them to be available all of the time and scale at any moment whenever any unanticipated load or traffic hits them. So in this video, I will be talking about the following points or topics. First of all, I will be discussing and showing you the environment requirements that you need to have before you start to deploy any application into App Engine. I will be using Python for my example here, but this does not apply to Python only. It, it, it's basically for everything, even .NET applications you can deploy and run in App Engine. And then I will talk about the GCP prerequisites that you need to have in order to do this such as you know creating the project and enabling the billing and all of these stuff and finally there are a few points that i want to talk about and in terms of what are the actual deployment requirements you know aside from the project and from the other environment stuff basically the yaml file the app.yaml file and in the case of python the requirements.txt file then I will be showing you the actual command and the actual deployment process, which is gcloud app deploy. <laughs> that is a very short command and a very straightforward process that you can have. Now, my example will be based on my course feedback application. That is a very small and tiny application that I have built in order to collect some feedback on my Google Workspace admin course which I suggest you check it out on Udemy. You can get it with a discounted price from the link in the video description. So right now this one is hosted on a VM that is running inside GCP. And I thought that why don't I try to put it on App Engine so that I cut the cost. I don't need to have the VM up all of the time. That's one of the benefits that you can get with App Engine and Cloud Functions that you only pay for the application when it is running and you only pay for the application for the duration and the invocations of the application only you don't have to pay for all of the duration of the months for example and i don't really have to keep paying for the vm to be up in case nobody is sharing any feedback or anything so whenever anyone wants to share the feedback an instance will be spinned up for them for uh, through App Engine. Then they will, you know, do the feedback process, and then they will that instance will be stopped. In this case, I only pay for the actual usage by the users, whether that is 24 by 7 or just an hour per day or randomly scattered across the day. At the end, I will only pay for what I use. And also for this deployment i'm going to be using the standard app engine environment because you can have a standard environment or an, a flexible one that that is actually based on containers so whenever you want to deploy an application in the flexible environment then you can have a lot of controls over the environment and the runtimes and the actual libraries that you are loading at the back end there will be a container that is pinned up for you to serve your application so that is very flexible and very strong, actually, a very strong offer that you can have. So the prerequisites for this are, as you already should expect and anticipate, this is a GCP service, so we should have a GCP project <laughs> so that we can deploy the application inside that project. Of course, by having the project, we should have the billing enabled as well. 
then once we do this then we have to enable the app engine api and that can be done through two ways either by going to the api directly and enabling that or just go to the api page and or to app engine page and that will enable the api for you in some situational cases you need you may need to enable cloud build api and uh, that is very situational because in some cases when you create a project if you had some sort of quotas on your billing enabled projects then the billing might not be enabled for your project then if you fix that and if you enable the billing again to your project then you will need to manually enable cloud build i will be showing you the steps to check if cloud build is enabled and to check if app engine api is enabled as well in a moment now and also the very important thing that you need to know is you need to have gcloud enabled and configured because using gcloud we are going to deploy the application and you can find more details and you can know more about gcloud by checking the video that i have created about gcloud how you can set up gcloud and how you can authorize it and use it with the most common and basic tasks you should see the link to this in the top right corner of this video and also you should see the link for that video in the video description google cloud sdk is an essential item that you should have in your daily routine and in your daily tasks in google workspace in gcp so let me go to the console and do the first step which is creating the project I can either use an existing project or I can create a new project so I will actually create a new project for this so I will go to the project selector and then on top right corner of this window I will click uh, new project in the new project I can just type whatever name for example app engine demo of course this is a very used name so I will get a random ID <laughs> then I will need to assign billing as well so i have selected my billing account then if uh, if you're having an organization it's a good idea to place it in a folder otherwise i'm doing this from my gmail so i don't really have an organization to associate it to this project so i'm just going to click create and that will create the project for me so the project is ready as you can see this is the dashboard of the project now i will copy the project id because i will need it in a bit when i want to start using gcloud just so that i don't do this again so copying this value here keeping this in the clipboard then i mentioned that you will need to enable the app engine api and the cloud build api the best way to do it is by going to the menu then go to the apis and services and then go to library so if you want to do for cloud build then you go to or you type cloud build api this will give you some sort of an autocomplete but it's the same so you click to cloud build api you'll find the first result here and all you have to do here is just click the enable button and once it's enabled it will take you to another interface where it will be showing you the statistics and the request status for this api and so on now the next step here is we need to set up the app engine environment and while we can do it from the uh, apis and services and the library i want to take you to the app engine page because i want to show you how you can set up your service and application because during the setup here it will ask you to set a location for your application and service and it's important that you do it right from the first time so click create application then this is where it's going to ask you to select the location i i like to host the applications that i create or i like to host my resources in europe so in, in specific belgium that is europe west one then once you select the region you say next then that's it basically it's going to give you a tutorial now where it will show you examples of how you can deploy applications using python for example or javascript or java or whatever language that you can think of but in my case that's the only step that is required for me to move on to the next step so now the service is enabled and created this is the tutorial as mentioned we don't really need to do anything with this it's just some information for us 
Now the next step here is to go through the files and the application that I have and this is done here so these are the files that I want to deploy and as you can see it's a very basic application in terms of structure and everything and the main important aspects of this are again the app.yaml file and the requirements.txt file now I'm not going to go into the details about these applications because these are application specific and or language specific and I want to show you the concept more than the actual language there so if you check the inside of requirements.txt this is what we're going to find it's just a plain text file with libraries and versions inside it so in my application I have used the flask library and in specific I have used this version and then so, so I need to specify it here so that whenever I deploy this application this uh, library or this module is called into the environment so that my application can use it same goes for the MySQL connector and the SQL alchemy and all of these now the content of the more important file app.yaml that's going to decide how your deployment is going to be done and how the application will be loaded and so on so as you can see here I am specifying the runtime environment to be Python 3.8 and these are the handlers that will handle the requests that are coming to the application basically anything that will come will be served from the root application or from the root uh, uh, routine or path and finally some environment variables that i have created because i needed to pass some information and some details to the application this environment variable section will actually work exactly the same way that it works on your local system so on your linux or windows when you set these environment variables and then you use them in your application that's the exact same behavior that you have here except you specify those in the app.yaml file now it is really 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 important that you are aware about the app.yaml file and you should be familiar with the basics at least of this google have done a good job actually to document the information that you need to have in the app.yaml file and they have listed some good scenarios and cases where you can just copy paste those examples modify them a little bit to fit your applications case and you'll be all good there will be a link that i will put in the video description and probably you should see it here as well on the top right section about the references and the documentation on app.yaml from google cloud documentation site so with this information and details let me now show you the steps to deploy this application into app engine and then starting and, and viewing the application after the deployment so again you will need to use gcloud for this google cloud sdk this is command line and the first step here is to identify on which project I'm connected and then do or change the project if required and in my case I need to change the project because I have created a new project for that so the command is gcloud config set project if I type project correctly then the ID of the project which is this lofty hole and whatever number so I am setting the project here and once it's done then I need to navigate to the location of this thing or this code so I'll just copy this one then I will navigate there okay so deploying the application is as simple as doing G cloud app deploy that's it <laughs> now you set and enjoy so here it's asking me to confirm the deployment and as you can see it's listing the target project the target service and the url for this and all of that so i will click yes i'm fine with this deployment and settings and then i'll press enter and i'll let it do its thing okay so the deployment is going on but if you notice here i've got an error on my first attempt and if for whatever reason you get this type of error 
that when you try to do gcloud app deploy and you get that it's trying probably to retrieve some sort of a service account or something then you need to go back to the console and then go to the uh, apis and the library of the apis then find the app engine admin api and then make sure you enable this api because most likely if you get that error this api would be disabled so i had to come here manually and enable this api and then the deployment command worked again and as you can see now it's going on and that's it the deployment is done if you want to see the actual application then you can type gcloud app browse or you can just copy this url uh, which is i'm going to do you can just copy this url and then you can navigate to the application in other video i'll be showing you how you can map this url to an actual domain name so that you can have something more friendly and more branded with your own website and identity rather than this long url which is somehow or sometimes not very user friendly actually although i like this uh, name that they give me <laughs> now this is an error that i have got from my application so i know the application works and it's not an, an error related to gcp it's an error from my own application and if you want to compare let me copy the parameters there so this is the old one that i have it on vm on, on compute engine and this is the new one that now i have it on app engine now you can see it will load the exact same page where it's showing me the actual application so that's it <laughs> this is one way for you to deploy your applications to app engine now if you want to see the backend this is what you will see when you go to app engine and when you go to the dashboard and in there you will find some good metrics and information about your service and all of that now app engine does have a free tier which is about 28 hours of instance time per day and if you go to instances you should see a single instance that is up or actually two instances that's nice so these are two instances that are up and running and serving my application and these are the cpu or the memory utilization basically you don't see the cpu i think it's just the memory utilization and the latency for this and if you go to versions you can see the actual deployed versions which is i think one version so far and finally the services which will give you the main url for the service you can navigate to a specific version here so if i have multiple deployments then i can go to these versions and see the differences between and change the traffic and all of that it's a lot it's a lot of talking actually about managing the traffic for the services in app engine so this is the main service you can find when you click the default you will find the or it will take you to the actual url which is this one the one with, without these parameters and if you want to see what's going on behind the scenes you can go to tools and then go to logs or debug or you can view the source so if you go to logs you will find the logs of the application who would requested what and what was the error if there are any errors and, and all of that so if you find this useful please like the video and subscribe and click that bell button to get notified of any new content also please let me know of any feedback or any comments that you have or if you want to have any specific topic or service whether it's gcp or google workspace covered and demonstrated for you i'll be more than happy to do it and check out the rest of my videos and my blog also the course that i mentioned earlier the google workspace admin course i have been changing a lot with this and i've been keeping it up to date with google's changes and the updates that google are introducing to the google workspace i would love to see your feedback on it and any critical feedback is also welcome because without your feedback i won't be able to improve and change anything in this course so once more, thank you for viewing and for your time and I will see you in a new video.